When I found out that I had a chance to come to the White House to uh, deliver two or three minutes in the realm of poetry, I immediately thought of Dr. Seuss <laughs> or William Shakespeare. And then I remembered that how uh, Jesse Jackson had so well acquitted himself with Dr. Seuss's green eggs and ham. <laughs> you remember that, thank you. So I decided that best I stick with Shakespeare. And I'm going to uh, read General Othello's testimony before the Senate of Venice uh, to defend himself against the charge of witchcraft, in particular of uh, bewitching Desdemona, the daughter of Senator Urbancio. Most potent, grave, and reverend signors, my very noble and approved good masters, that I have taken away this good man's daughter. It is most true. True. I've married her. The very head and front of my offending at this extent no more. Rude am I in my speech and little blessed with a soft phrase of peace for since these arms of mine had seven years pith till now some nine moons wasted they have used their dearest action in the tented field and little of this great world can I speak more than pertains to feats of broil and battle, and therefore little shall I grace my cause in speaking for myself. Yet by your gracious patience, I will a round unvarnished tale deliver of my whole course of love. What drugs, what charms, what conjuration, and what mighty magic for such proceeding I am charged with all. Her father loved me, oft invited me, still questioned me, the story of my life from year to year, the battles, sieges, fortunes I've passed. I ran it through, even from my boyish days to the very moment he bade me tell it. Wherein I spoke of most disastrous chances, of moving accidents by flood and field, of hairbreadth scapes in the imminent deadly breach, of being taken by the insolent foe and sold to slavery, of my redemption thence and portents of my travel's history. What in of Andre's vast and desert's idle Rough quarries, rocks, and hills whose heads touch heaven. It was my hint to speak, and such was the process. And of the cannibals that each other eat, the anthropophagi, men whose heads do grow beneath their shoulders. <laughs> This to hear, what does Demona seriously incline? But still the house affairs would draw her thence, whichever she could with haste dispatch, she'd come again and with a greedy ear devour up my discourse, which I observing, she took once a pliant hour and found good means to draw from her a prayer of earnest heart that I would all my pilgrimage dilate, whether by parcel she had something heard, but not intentively. I did consent, and often did beguile her of her tears when I did speak of some distressful stroke my youth suffered. My story being done, she gave me for my pains a world of tears. She swore a faith 
was strange. It was passing strange. It was pitiful. It was wondrous pitiful. She wished she had not heard it. And yet she wished that heaven had made for her such a man. She thanked me and bade me, if I had a friend that loved her, I should but teach him how to tell my story, and that would woo her. Upon this hint I spoke. She loved me for the dangers I have passed, and I loved her that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft 